welcome po sa ating 29th Kapihang OH online edition. This is a monthly session, Kapihang OH, where we tackle the latest updates in the field of occupational safety and health. I hope everyone is safe and healthy wherever you are right now. Kami po dito sa Philippine College of Occupational Medicine, Quezon City Chapter, ay nagagalak at napaunlakan niyo po kami muli ng inyong oras para makinig at matuto sa diskusyon ngayong gabi. Ako po ang inyong host at moderator, Dr. Margo Venus de Salyacu, Public Relations Officer ng PICOM QCC. Welcome back po sa ating Kapihang OH. Tuning in this 2021. Ngayong gabi po ay tatalakayin po natin ang tungkol sa isang napapanahong topic ngayong gabi. Ito po ay ang Certifying Workplace Safety Against COVID-19, Understanding Dollar DILG, DOT, DTI, JMC, number 21-01. To welcome us all sa ating 29 Kapihang OH, ladies and gentlemen, our PICOM Quezon City Chapter President, Dr. Catherine Artais Cariaga. Thank you, Dr. Aku. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat na aming tagapanood at tagapagsubaybay mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas at sa labas ng bansa. Sa aming kapamilya sa Philippine College of Occupational Medicine, mga kapuso sa Occupation Safety and Health, at kapatid sa profesyon ng kalusugan, isang mainit na pagtanggap mula po sa amin na bumubuo ng PICOM Quezon City Chapter. Sa mga nakalipas na buwan, patuloy pa ding namamayagpag ang bangis ng COVID-19 at sa pagdami nga ng sari-saring COVID variant sa bansa, patuloy na pinaiting ng gobyerno at iba't ibang sangay ng kinauukulan ang pagpapalawak ng kaalaman sa lahat. Bagamat patuloy na ang pagbabakuna sa ating mga mamamayang Pilipino sa lahat ng panig ng bansa, hindi pa din tumitigil ang mahigpit na pagpapatupad ng polisiya at protokol sa lahat na sektor na lipunan, lalo na sa mundo ng paggawa. Dala ng masusing pag-aaral at pakikipagtulungan ng iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno at pribadong sektor, marami ng panuntunan ng naisabatas para magbigay kaukulang hadlang sa pagkalat at pagdami ng kaso na sakit na ito sa bansa. Patuloy na ngang nakikita ang bunga ng mahakbang na ito sa kasulukuyang sa pagbabalik ng halos lahat ng manggagawa sa kanikanilang trabaho. Kaya po ngayong gabi sa ating virtual na pagtitipon-tipon, kami ay lubos na nalulugod dahil kasama po natin ang isa na namang eksperto sa larangan na ito sa ating ikadalumput siyam na kapihan para talakayin ang Certifying Workplace Safety Against COVID-19. Understanding DOLE, DOH, DILG, DOT, DTI, JMC number 21-01. Tara po, tayo ay sabay-sabay na makinig at matuto ngayong gabi. Maraming maraming salamat po at isang ligtas na gabi po muli sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat, Dr. Cariaga. Ladies and gentlemen, my dearest colleagues and to all our beloved guests from all sectors of workforce, we are very honored that napaulakan tayo ng ating panauhing pangdangal ngayong gabi. To introduce our distinguished and honorable guest tonight, may we call our Chapter Chair Finance Committee, Dr. Jason John J. Cabignon. Thank you, Dr. Ku. It is my honor to introduce one of my personal inspirations in our field of practice. Our distinguished speaker is the Assistant Secretary for Regional Operations, Labor Standards, and Special Concerns of the Department of Labor and Employment. She is also the concurrent Director 4 of the Bureau of Working Conditions of the same institution, a bona fide member of PCOM QC. Dear friends, please welcome Assistant Secretary Maria Teresita S. Kukwe. Good evening. Good evening to my colleagues in PCOM and to my colleagues in safety and health. Uh, isang, isang, uh, actually, it's a rainy night here already. And uh, let me start so that we can also finish early as 
uh, you know, the weather is really going against us. But we're all working from where we are. I hope you're all working from home, especially because it's going to take some, it's a hard travel back because of the rain. Anyway, uh, can I share my screen, Paul? Yes, Doctor, you can you may share your screen. Okay, so this evening, you inv uh, uh, first let me be grateful for you to invite the Dole in sharing one of the most recent issuances that we have uh, for COVID. And this, like you said, is one of um, the, the actions of the interagency para, actually this is more of a, um, improving consumer confidence, customer confidence in entering workplaces. When COVID started, really our nakaroon ng risk aversion, risk uh, uh, because of the fear, of course, it is really a fear on being impossibly being infected by COVID. Nobody wanted to go out, even to go to work, to report to work. And there was also the hesitancy in even going to places where we have to go, like the grocery stores, supermarkets, uh, markets, uh, even having our haircut. You know, uh, my hair has not seen the salon, but will see it very soon because I am now on my way to a full vaccination. Um, I am about to enter my second week. <laughs> anyway, having said that, this is a safety seal program that addresses how we can, how we show the public that workplaces are doing everything to bring down the risk of infection and transmission. And if you see that seal, it will certify that yes, they are complying and they are making sure you will, the risk of being infected is very low. So, uh, okay. So this is where the IATF came from. It, this is a recent issue once, and again, it, the opening of the economy has always been an issue because nobody wanted really to go out and the economy needed to, to jumpstart. And again, we had to deal with the risk. And that was why the private sector has been saying, let us show the public that they can enter our workplaces and the, um, the risk of being infected is low. So having said that, we know that the DOH has already issued the minimum public health standards. We also know that many other agencies have issued our, our standards, our protocols, as uh, we are responsible for certain sectors. And that is why if you see that very long line list of government agencies, these are now the authorities that can issue the safety seal. So you saw the DOT, DOH, DTI, DOLE, uh, DILG, including their LGUs, even the PNP. We, they, they are there in the JMC. They have signed it because we are responsible in implementing this issue once. So what do we show here? This is again, like I said, um, the objective that we are bringing out a certificate. Second, it's not just that seeing that they are compliant, you will see the a digital, official digital contact tracing application, which means companies must be using the stay safe or because we know that there are issues on the say on the safe the stay safe. Any digital contact tracing application um, is now can, is is uh um required and of course that they are meeting with all uh the public health standards the protocols by the different government agencies so that is the safety seal certification program so okay the objective like i said is to assure the consumers and the public that these companies these workplaces they comply with the minimum public health standards. So alam nyo na nga, it's a certification. Meron kong ipapakita, may ipalalabas, may makikita ang 
customer ang public na certificate. It will encourage the adoption of a digital contact tracing, stay safe, or any digital contact tracing already is allowed. And why is a digital contact tracing valuable? Because that's the way, you know, of uh, um, ensuring that we are able to contain transmission as well. Kung may pumasok, edi, they will now set that digital contact tracing should have a means to uh, baga, alert those who possibly entered that space na nandun ang positive so that they can isolate themselves or quarantine first themselves and observe. They don't. They should not be going out because they will just, if they will be positive, they will again, uh, it will again run the risk of further transmitting the virus. That's why that digital contact tracing is very important in the safety seal. And of course, this will now allow uh, with, the, with the consumers going out, with the public going out, that the, open, the economy is now reopening. So this will apply to all private business establishments, public places, and even government offices. There are, will be separate guidelines to cover other government offices and public transportation units. You will see later that there is nothing yet on hospitals because this will be issued by the DOH because of course the responsibility of um, complying with the minimum public health standards, especially in hospitals, will be with the DOH. And for the public transport, the DOTR will also bring out its own separate guidelines for this. So we define the terms. Many of these you already know, the interagent, the IATF, okay, that is uh, the departments, the government agencies that are part of this big sector that uh, meets to provide the policies on COVID, that uh, recommends it actually to the president. An issuing authority for the safety seal is a government agency or instrumentality vested under these guidelines with the authority to issue a certificate and award the safety seal. The minimum public health standards are the current guidelines set by the DOH and other sector-specific guidelines. So sector-specific, remember, I, you saw the many agencies involved. They will, they will have different guidelines. Um, Sorry. Okay. And um, oh, uh, and these are all uh, set to implement the non-pharmaceutical interventions. Non-pharmaceutical interventions, you know, there's the public health measures that do not involve vaccines and medications or other pharmaceutical interventions. And this is what we do. These are the public health protocols that would that we do to reduce transmission, contact rates, the duration of infectiousness. So that's using the face mask, the face shield, physical distancing, frequent disinfection, the isolation, quarantine. These are all the non-pharmaceutical interventions. We have the safety seal certification program. So this is now what I am discussing. This certification scheme that affirms that an establishment or a public transportation unit, this is still to be, to be coming in. Has it been inspected by the government and found compliant? with the minimum public health standards first, has issued a digital contact tracing second, and of course would have the requisite business permit or franchise. The Stay Safe is the official digital contact tracing apps or its equivalent, any digital contact tracing application that is equivalent to this is now accepted. So uh, that seal will affirm that an establishment has been found compliant and because it is a seal, it is going to be displayed conspicuously at all entrance points according to the prescribed dimensions. And obtaining this safety seal shall not be at any cost to the establishment. Also, the safety seal is voluntary. Okay. You will see later on that this is not mandated. This is just uh, a means for workplaces to enroll in or to... Um, to apply for, but it has it will carry an impact because it shows that safety seal once given will say that a company is that workplace is compliant. Look at uh, if you enter a mall and you would like to eat, and you see one with a safety seal and one without, you will think, you know, proper appropriately that the the 
the food establishment carrying the safety seal has already com is compliant with all the public health standards, uh, has uh, taken, has made all efforts so that the risk for those who go there will be low for COVID and other diseases, of course. And you are now confident that if you eat there, you will be okay. So be, that's what that's the no. The, the impact to the establishment is is that people will now be, feel confident to enter, and that is why even if it's voluntary, we see that it does carry a value for companies who would like to apply for the safety seal. And it is important also to note that this safety seal, because there is an inspection that will happen, is valid for six months from the date of issuance, except for tourism, which is valid for one year. And this shall be renewable subject to the compliance with the eligibility requirements. Why six months? Because we have to inspect. The government knows that compliance is crucial here in the safety seal. Uh, as a DOLE regulatory agent, agency that conducts inspection, sometimes we really see that after, after inspection, nagiging lax. They, you know, companies just say, oh, tapos na. okay, compliant tayo. Then they they have this, you know, they kind of fall back. And here with a safety seal, if you want to be renewed, you really have to always comply and exert the effort because you have the public who will go there and who must be assured. That's why it's a six months. Use a tourism, it's one year. Uh, first and foremost, because really they're, not, they're inspectors also, they have um, not as much. And uh, they also, they, they said that they, they do assure, assure the public that even if it's for one year, they are really also uh, looking at proper compliance, even if it is valid, even if the length of its validity is, to, is for one year. So this is the safety seal. I, in the invitation, I asked Dr. Jing to put it there because it does carry a bearing. You see that, that means they have followed all the safety and health protocols and there are other um, details that should be there because pwede nga mapeke to, pero yung QR code ay hindi humapeke, the, of course, our logo. Now, the safety seal number, it is, we already have a template for that. The, the DOLE has a template for this and you can check in the DOLE websites, in the regional office websites, if that company is really present, if, uh, if they exist in their safety seal establishments that have been issued by the regions. So that safety seal has the security measures and it should be verifiable with the issuing authority. Now, issuing authority shall keep a record of establishments issued with a safety seal. And actually we do have to report this every week to the DTI. The focal person in charge of the safety seal is the DTI together with the private sector. Um, so once it's once we inspect, either depending on our agreement between the regional offices and the establishment, we can send you the, the safety seal certificate and you print it, or we print it for you and you just pick it up from the office. But these are what, what uh, we just like to show you is that, yes, it is existing and it is there. Now, we, in terms of the responsibilities, the different agencies, you have to understand that for the safety seal, may kanya-kanya kaming sector sa gobyerno. Hindi ho lahat sakop ng dole, hindi rin ho sakop lahat ng DTI. And this is where I am going in this, the following slides. The DOT has for its responsibility, of course, tourism enterprises like hotels, resorts, apartment hotels, other accredited accommodation establishments that travel and tour services, the venues and facilities used for the, what they call MICE, the meetings, incentives, conferences, and events, and, of, and the restaurants inside hotels and resorts. So those restaurants will also carry its own safety seal. And for the DOLE, our sector to cover the safety seal is for the manufacturing, construction sites, utilities, that's water, elect electric, water, gas, air conditioning, supply, storage, wa waste management, the information and communication companies, including movie production, as well as warehouses. For the DTI, they shall cover grocery, supermarkets, membership, shopping clubs. I think they have already um, 
put on safety seals, I think to SM supermarket, if I'm not mistaken in Pasay, uh, I have to, I'm, uh, I'm not just so sure if it is in that um, area, but I know uh, the DTI has already uh, uh, provided this for convenience stores, for construction supply hardware stores, for logistics service providers, barber shops and salons, service and repair shops. Bruno's is also another of the barber shops that the DTI has already issued a safety seal uh, with. For the LGUs, they will be responsible for malls, wet markets, other retail stores, restaurants outside hotels and resorts. These are now where it's now the LGU and not the DT and not the DOT. Restaurants outside hotels, resorts, fast food, eateries, coffee shops, banks, money changers, pawn shops, remittance centers, car wash, laundry service centers, art galleries, libraries, museums, zoos sports centers, tutorials, testing and review centers, the gym, the spa, the cinema arcades, and all other private establishments. The BPOs have asked us kung saan ang um, issuing authority nila for the safety seal. You did not see it with the DOLE. You did not see it with the DTI. Then it falls with the LGU. They have been writing to us, Pasensya na, in our agreement with the safety seal, it will be the LGU to cover these uh, BPOs or others that are not written in the different, you know, uh, the sectors, then it will be covered by the LGU. For the DILG and the PNP, they shall uh, be responsible for the city halls, municipal halls, provincial capitals, all other LGU facilities and buildings, police camps and stations, the Bureau of Fire Protection Offices and Fire Stations, the provincial city jails, barangay halls and other barangay facilities, and all other public establishments not covered by other issuing agencies. Pwede lang pong hospital. Kasi ang hospital po sa DOH, unless they will have an agreement, but for now, ang alam namin ho sa DOH po, ang hospitals, once they will be um, they, they come out with their order or advisory on uh, the issuance of the safety seal for not just hospitals and other healthcare facilities. So eligibility and certification. So who is eligible? So first, they should be compliant with registration or accreditation requirements, meaning a meron silang may permit, may DTI sec registration or DOT accreditation. And for the DOLE, yung registration with the standard 1020 is also a requirement because it's, you know, that, that registration is free of charge and it will also look at the, uh, the existence of a mayor's permit. The use of a stay safe or any contact tracing, dig, uh, digital contact tracing tool, the enforcement of the minimum public health standards. So now I will go to the different uh, minimum public health standards. Ito covered na ng lahat ng sinabi kong mga establishments, all sectors, kami sa issuing authority, this is uh, mandated in all our sectors. Uh, this MPHS, the minimum public health standards as written. First, that they in that establishments, employees submit a health declaration or symptoms assessment, whether it's digital, physical, manual, we leave it up to the company, but as long as it's there. Second, there should be a non-contact temperature check. Customers and other individuals who enter the premises are asked to register with Stay Safe. And as applicable, there is an isolation area installed for symptomatic employees. And once identified as a suspect COVID-19 case, are reported to the BHIRT immediately for proper observance of COVID-19 protocols. So this is, should also be present and other minimum public health standards, availability of hand washing stations, soap sanitizers, hand drying equipment, observance of physical distancing or spacing through the installation of physical barriers in enclosed areas where physical distancing may be compromised. For example, they block off chairs, they use markers or stickers on the floor for spacing. And you know, I have gone to the church recently, they, they really have uh, tapes, that will um, not allow people to sit beside each other and um, as, uh, ensure physical distancing. So these are all examples of the physical distancing uh, procedures. And very important because this is not part of the minimum public health standards, 
that they are compliant with our ventilation guidelines in workplaces as the Dolly issue ones 224-21. So they should be showing this as well. We know that those in malls, they have to be covered. They will be showing their compliance to the checklist in the ventilation guidelines. There's also a disinfection protocol that should be followed and that should be in accordance with the DOH memo 2020-57 and 157A. And these are the guidelines for cleaning and disinfection. And that would also, of course, look into the regular sanitation of chairs, desks, tables, counters, pens. So you frequently touch surfaces are regularly disinfected. And not the least, the wearing of face masks, face shields, especially in enclosed spaces and wearing of other protective outer garments, garments as warranted. They should also have a referral system for medical and psychosocial services. This is now required as well. And these are all part of our checklist because this is a mandated requirement for all of us as issuing authority. They shall have a safety officer, and these are his specific responsibilities to coordinate with appropriate bo bodies for support and referral to community-based isolation facilities for confirmed cases with mild symptoms and to health facilities for severe and critical care. They should be undertaking contact tracing or coordinating the conduct thereof in their own offices, whether it's them or they have a team doing that, but that is still the responsibility of the safety officer. And for the safety officer, at least he should know or he has uh, regular updates on the status of employees quarantined or isolated. And again, a new addition, but very important because of the issues now with face masks, the facility for proper storage, collection, treatment, and disposal of used face masks and other infectious waste. So the, those requirements are necessary and mandated. And then these are now uh, the next uh, portion, the checklists. This is what we also uh, look at for compliance. So. Uh, you, you saw the different issuing authority. We shall develop our checklist that will enumerate the eligibility requirements in an easy to understand format. So um, we have developed that. That is our joint memo circular with DTI. It is in a checklist already. And we have even incorporated all the other requirements like the um, contact tracing application. It's part of the uh, checklist, including the mayor's permit, and all of these mandated MPHS uh, protocols, they're all now part of our checklist. And to ensure that everybody knows what and where to go and what to look at, we are mandated as an issuing authority to establish a microsite, which is a dedicated page in our official website, which now we use, what we use now is the BWC website and contains the following information. So it should have all of these items and that's in our uh, website for safety seal. And you will see that in the BWC website. It will contain the implementing guidelines for the safety seal certification program, the checklist that we use. If you go to the DTI, they will have a different checklist. If you go to the DOT, they will also have a different checklist. So you really have to ensure that if, you're, that if, you're, uh, if your workplace is for... Um, you know, an issuing authority for that safety seal, doon ka pupunta, hindi dole po lahat, ha? I will again remind you. Now, it will also carry the contact details of the inspection units, uh, whom in the dole will you contact if you want to be inspected already. You can download the safety seal toolkit. It will list all establishments issued with the safety seal, complaint hotlines, and because the safety seal may be revoked, there will be a request form for reassessment or reinstatement of the safety seal. This is the BWC website. This is the banner for our safety seal. If you click that, you will have all of these items, all these icons. And that is what uh, I was talking to you about in all the items I mentioned earlier. Now, if you click the first box on the implementing guidelines, it will show you this one, okay? And if we, let me go back to the checklist. If you click that, you will go to this. This is now the checklist that you will be using. And please take note, there is the Stay Safe app. If not, then you will put the details of what contact tracing app you have. 
it will also uh, I, it, we also put down uh, below the mayor's permit that is required on the registration that is required as well. This is the if you click the app on the mic on the uh, on the safety seal toolkit, you will see all of this also and its security measures. So how will you apply? So first, the owner authorized representative shall download or uh, from the website or secure the from the office of the issuing authority the appropriate checklist and perform the self-assessment. So you you know what we say, I mean, now that we are really um, discouraging face-to-face, -face, you can download it. I've already shown you. In fact, we've updated it for easier reference. And um, that's the, the latest one, we, keep, we, we put it now in our, the website. So download, do a self-assessment. If everything that in the checklist is yes, and you have no problems, it's favorable, then you can now contact the DOLE or any, or if you are in the food sector, outside hotel, you contact the LGU to schedule an inspection. The issuing authority shall now validate the status or validity of government issued permits and accreditation. And that is the first thing. If you are valid, then they can go on uh, with the inspection. So how can they apply? Uh, okay, this the following measure is still on application. The, author the authority will inspect. The PNP may, be, may join if requested, but really we only look that they be part if they're inspecting places open to the public. After inspection, the inspector or the inspection team shall inform the owner of the result and the next steps. If they're compliant, then they will be informed of how the safety seal will be provided. But if there is any lacking or if there's any deficiency or they have not um, fully complied, then they're advised to correct the deficiencies and apply for the assessment. They can also be uh, certified, not from an application, but from a regular monitoring, like from the inspection of DOLE, which we, of course, must be which we regularly do. Now, during our regular inspection, this is for DOLE, huh? I know the others can also be doing the regular monitoring. The inspection team shall check whether the business establishment is eligible. Now, if they're eligible, we can inform the owner if they would like to, uh, to apply for the safety seal. And then, um, then they, they will still need to apply for it. But because they have already been assessed, then it will be easier for the, um, for the rest of the, uh, the procedures on how to download and what else um, to be done once we give them the safety seal uh, certificate. But you know, if in the regular monitoring there are still deficiencies, then of course we do not advise the safety seal uh, to, because they, they have not complied and they're not eligible for this. So on complaints handling, we, these are all the complaint hotlines Remember, these are displayed openly. That's why if the public will see that there is a problem with an, in an establishment has, that has been issued a safety seal on the minimum public health standards, they can immediately complain. And that, that's why, uh, you know, establishments who are volunteering for this, they, they know that they, they are open to complaints and that's why they will try to avoid it to the best they can because they, it's really an assurance to the public that they are compliant. So first, on the complaints handling, there is a no wrong door policy because uh, if the dollar, I mean, complaints that are received not under any or our, our agency's jurisdiction, it shall be referred to the appropriate issuing authority. For example, restaurant. May nag-complain sa dole. Actually, ang sabi ko nga sa aming mga inspectors, if this is with regards to the safety seal, ibabalik mo yan sa bang restaurant, kung inside the hotel, DOT, outside the hotel, LGU. But if this is an OSH violation na hindi safety seal, of course, that's still dole. Because dole, uh, this one, I have to really um emphasize and uh, make it clear 
that the dole's mandate for inspection is not is we are not giving this up because of the safety seal we are still mandated to inspect all private establishments for both the general labor standards for safety and health and it has to be done i mean this is really our mandate uh, uh, as the dole now if it is the safety seal like i said this is voluntary naman then you will now have to put them in the sectors that uh, that would be responsible for the establish where the establishment belongs to. Like kung hotel yan at may complaints hotel, edi eh, bibigay din namin sa DTI. O kung, kung barbershop yan, edi eh, sa, uh, sa DOT yung, ano, sa hotel, sa DTI, yung barbershop or grocery. So, sa DTI din yan. Or sa mall. Because I know parang the first safety seal that was issued was sa Valenzuela Mall, I think, two weeks ago. Pero mas sabulakan pa yung unang safety seal na na-issue by the iba ang malls LGU. Now, the safety seal may be renewed not earlier than one month before its expiration. Remember, validity is just six months. So by the fifth month, establishment shall contact the, shall contact the issuing authority to schedule an inspection. After inspection, there's a verification to see continued compliance. If they're fully compliant, we'll now issue, the issuing authority shall now issue a new safety seal with a new number and uh, all the security details, of course, should still be there. If the establishment is now found to be with deficiencies, then the necessary advice should be made for correction of these deficiencies. On revocation, like we said, you are really open for complaints. However, the complaint shall be valid and it must contain these details, the name and location of the establishment, the public health standard that has been violated or a description of that, the name and contact number of the complainants and supporting proofs, either photos or narratives, detailed narratives, these are supporting proofs. Now, upon receipt of or referral of a complaint, there should be a surprise inspection on the establishment. Now, motu proprio or by its um, on its own, the issuing authority can also revoke can revoke a safety seal when there are also two um, uh, two uh, uh, um, deficiencies, a clustering of COVID nineteen cases that have been reported. We have identified that for the dole, if you have a, a large size establishment, that would mean at one instance four cases of COVID. So that would be considered a cluster and that would mean um, there should be immediate inspection to see if it is really happening that there is this clustering that is now ongoing because that can be now um, um, an indicator for revoking the safety seal or any willful violation of what I mentioned earlier, the minimum public health standards. Now, should the establishment that has been granted the safety seal be found non-compliant, uh, the procedure would be a notice to explain shall be issued to the, um, to the establishment by the issuing authority, and it, they should reply within 48 hours submitted to the issuing authority. And alternatively, they can immediately comply within that 48 hours and attach the proof of compliance. However, should the explanation still be found lacking, the safety shield shall be recalled by the issuing authority. If the safety seal is revoked, it does not automatically result in the suspension of operations. So kung nakita nyo na ang Chow King may safety seal, pero na-revoke kasi uh, may complaint or there was a... Uh, uh, deficiency in the minimum public health standards. Now, it does not mean to say na yung Chowking um, branch na yan, eh, suspended na yung operations. Hindi naman. It just means to say you're going to bring down the safety seal because you have to be complying with um, that deficiency that has been noted. In case the violation pertains to any of the minimum public health standards, the business establishment shall be given another 48 hours from the time the safety seal is revoked to implement corrective actions. Remember, these are minimum public health standards. They should really be compliant to all of that. That is a mandate to all establishments. If after this period, they still fail to correct the deficiency, 
the suspension of operations may be ordered by the city municipality until corrective actions have been implemented. Now, establishments with revoked safety seal may be reinstated and uh, they will go again through another set of procedures. They submit to the issuing authority a request for reinstatement with complete proof of compliance with the minimum public health standards and um, the installation of the digital contact tracing apps. And there will also now be a conduct of an inspection to verify compliance. If it is reinstated, it is now valid for another six months from the date of reinstatement. That is for all establishments except for the tourism, which will be valid for one year. So these are the final provisions on separability. If any clause is declared unconstitutional, then uh, these, um, these shall not affect, invalidate, or impair any part thereof and the judgment shall be merely confined to that clause or provision. Effectivity, these guidelines have been published in two newspapers last, I think even in March. So it is now effective. It just took some time to, um, to be implemented, but it is now happening. Uh, we are now really um, uh, drum rolling the safety seal implementation, in fact, of course, NCR is one of our big um, uh, regions to implement this, but this is also happening in all our regions already. So I think this ends my presentation. Thank you. I'll stop sharing if you have any questions, Paul. Thank you very much, Doctora, for that very insightful discussion. Let's open the floor by giving Dr. Kokweko our appreciation. Dear participants, kindly select from the reactions button to show what you are feeling right now. Um, kindly select po. Marami kayang ano, marami sila ang tanong. <laughs> I was going through the chat. <laughs> uh, yes, no. <laughs> but before you answer for our questions, let me just let me just share our appreciation. No, marami po sa, sa ating reactions na heart, marami pong confetti, marami pong thumbs up. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Kokoeko. So, actually, so many questions, but most of them were answered already by our organizers and even some of the participants. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your help. So maybe one question though is related to seemingly different um, policies from other issuances. Like for example, look regarding the, the hand drying equipment. One comment po in the chat is according to the ventilation guidelines, the hand drying equipment is not recommended anymore. Any comment on that po though? Oh, actually, if you read the whole thing, it's hand drying equipment or supplies, and it says single use towel. So, hindi naman natin sinabi, ibalik niyo sa ano. Hand drying pa rin naman tuwalya. Hindi na yung ano, the machine, uh, you know, the hand dryers. But we, kasi in the ventilation, we prohibited that already. We did not allow it to be used. I see. Thank you, that. Thank, thank you for that, Doc. Um, another question, Doc, will be some DAO actually visited the checklist and they found out that um, foot baths are still included in the checklist. However, in the living recommendations, though, po, it is no longer recommended. Any updates po regarding that, po, Doc? Uh, even, you know, um, we, we just put it there because that was also one of the um, recommendations made. But if you say it's not present, that does not mean we are uh, we are uh, requiring it. So um, it, it does not. We are not looking at foot baths as a mandatory requirement. But some really still put it, and we have we feel like if I said this is really the checklist we use even for food and agri, then those foot baths would be needed. That's why we cannot just take it out. Remember, this is the checklist of Dole. Like if you're in um, manufacturing, you don't need it, that's fine. But if we see that in your sector that it would be needed, then that should be considered. 
I see. Thank you, Doc, for that uh, clarification. What about Doc? There's one question pertaining to falsification of the safety seal. Do we have any penalty for that? Oh, ano yan? A misrepresentation yan, ha? You know, the safety seal is still under the bigger Oslo, the 198, because this is still, it's together with the DOLE. The DOLE, when we implement our guidelines, we cover, I mean, it is under the umbrella of our safety and health law, and it's IRR. And it's an IRR carries the penalty. So if you misrepresent, that's already a 100,000 peso fine instantly. Um, that, that's a complaint because, number one, you might feel anybody can do that. But even for the dollars, you do the round of inspections as people look. That's what it said now that they will go to, they can check immediately in the dollar sites. And once we see this, these are already grounds for possibly, possibly, ha, and I know because there's due process penalizing establishments. I see. Seriosong, ano pala yung violation? Oh, oh. <laughs> Voluntary naman to eh. Kaya wala kayo mag-misrepresent. <laughs> Thank you for that, Doc. Thank you for the clarification. There's a question din kasi regarding what if uh, some companies no, will not be getting that safety seal. Oh, oh. Uh, remember, we encourage, we highly encourage you to comply, use it, and then uh, and display it because you should be proud of it. But if you can't, because they, I mean, if make deficiency, we'll help you naman see how you can comply the best you can so that immediately, once you address it, then you can be issued the safety seal. I see. Doc, may bayad ba tong safety seal? Wala! Lagi <laughs> libre! That's okay. why, it, but that, kaya nga, um, sa dole, magkakaroon pa kami ng cost if we print it for you, but that's fine. But if we give it to you electronically, kayo na mag-print. Pero, um, we also have specifications sa dole kasi once ba rin, okay, have to surrender it to the dole. I see. Thank you, Doc. Doc, what about uh, for restaurants, for example, a restaurant will be uh, receiving a safety seal. Will it warrant an increase in seating capacity or Ay, yeah. any advantage? Remember, uh, I'm not sure if you are um, keeping up with the IATF resolutions. Now that we are in GCQ with restriction, I think uh, indoor dining is allowed for 30% of capacity. But if you have a safety seal, there's additional 10%. So there are there are incentives attached to the safety seal. And if you have, kasi nga, building consumer confidence din to, so, uh, to, and also to reward establishments that make the effort, so there are these incentives that are given to uh, the establishments. And um, we are also looking at this now in terms of possibly other establishments and increasing the, the percentage of uh, those who can enter these establishments. Kasi pag nagko-quarantine, di ba, up to 50%, the capacity. So, once you have the safety seal, that it allows for uh, another percentage. I see. Is it renewable din po pala, no? Oh, oh, Six months lang ang validity, ah. Um, That's why uh, it's not even one year. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga sabi na namin sa Dolage ko, we, our, our operations will really be, that it's, uh, but we will have to double all our efforts because even to look at safety seal, we will look at establishments twice. But that's okay because we really have to ensure that uh, the safety protocol, safety and health protocols are, are in place in workplaces. Okay, thank you. Uh, another po pala asset will be, um, you, you shared a very good um, slide set a while ago regarding uh, the issuing authorities, no malino, no malino, very specific. And in the end, if a company will not be falling in any of those, they will be applying in their respective LGUs. There's one question, Doc, is there a particular unit in the LGU that um, they will have to communicate with? Alam mo, kasi we cannot, I cannot talk for, for, you know, for the LGUs, but they know naman, I mean, we have been meeting with the DILG, and ang LGU nga, ang masigasig na gaano ng, ng safety seal eh. So, siguro, when you contact the LGUs, they know the um, office that would be uh, assigned to inspect for the safety seal. Kasi, alam mo ba, yung this Friday yata, saan ba sila papunta? I saw their, ano eh, parang sa chowking ba? <laughs> May mga, ano, 
and masigasig talaga sila. <laughs> Thank you. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Doctor sa ah, de, mga malls. Oh. Oh, uh, Bita mall daw sa Green Hills. Magsa-safety seal na. <laughs> sila yung oh, mga excited mag-apply. <laughs> okay. Doctor, sa question din po pala regarding the contact tracing, you mentioned a while ago the um, parang universal contact tracing. Stay safe. Stay safe on the app. What if po meron daw sarili silang digital contact tracing sa kanilang company? Will that be sufficient? Yeah, okay na. O, dati talaga, kasi da, yung issuance kasi ng resolution ng IATF, dapat stay safe kasi the, our, that is the official contact tracing application. However, because of the, there are still um, problems with the stay safe. Pumayag na yung IATF and the working group na any digital contact tracing. Anyway, ano, dapat uh, interoperable naman sila dapat. Ha? So that's okay. I see. As if there's also ano, a lot of question regarding the medical clinics. So I, I guess these are private medical clinics. Sino yeah. daw yung mag inspect De, as a Friday, I promise, kasi I took it up na, I mean, every Friday we meet on the safety seal because we have to, there are evolving issues like this one. This is not the first time I heard about it. One of the PICOM, si ano, si, sa, sa Tacloban ba? Ah, oh, si Joey ba? Si Joey ba yung nag, ano, sa, uh, who asked me about healthcare, the clinics. I asked the DOH, but they said uh, they're still coming up with the guidelines. So, I'll ask again and update you again, the PICOM Quezon City na lang on the healthcare facilities and when um, the safety seal guidelines will be set for them. I see. And another po pala ASEC, what if daw naka-work from home ang karamihan ng mga empleyado at nabigyan ng safety seal? Magiging rason ba ito para pabalikin sila sa on-site? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and actually, alam mo, the, the work from home and physical uh, presence at work, mga agreements yan between the companies and the employees. We have to, of course, I, we have to respect the policies of and the agreements made by both. If there is really, a, you know, um, if the companies have made the effort to ensure safety and health and they also need the people to go back and there's vaccination that is also happening already, and they're also providing plus, plus, plus. So, you know, it also tells the employees, yeah, it's safe now to, to go back. We can now return. And that's why, um, you know, having that, even if, kasi ang dole, look at our, no, hindi nga naman kami uh, customer driven, kasi kung manufacturing, but it is heavy on workers' safety and health. These are employees who have to go to work or report to work every day. Manufacturing, talagang may physical presence yan. Hindi pwedeng mag-ano yung makina na walang tao doon. But it makes, uh, it the, the compliance, the protocols are there. And that will assure the workers na you have taken the time. And which will include for physical distancing and better managing of workers, a possible work from home type of arrangement. So you're not going to say na work from home is, uh, is uh, an arrangement so that they don't report work. But, you know, work from home is also an arrangement to keep numbers down so that there will be less people out. Less people out is less exposure to publics. And that is also keeping everyone safe, you know, in their own bubbles. But there are those who have to go out that it also means a safe space for them as they go out. Thank you, Doc. Truly, truly understandable. So at this point, Point, Asik, uh, mukhang na, na-entertain na po natin lahat ng questions. At least those are not late. Those are uh, not included in your in your lecture. So maybe, Asik, maybe we can ask for your take-home message. Ah, okay. Alam ko, I mean, to many of you, you are in companies that may not be covered by the DOLE as an issuing authority. But, you know... Be glad because our our checklist is so <laughs> has so much details, but again because of the safety and health um, protocols. If you go to if you are with you know if you're covered by the DPI, 
hindi ganun kadami. Chinek ko na yung checklist nila eh. Sabi ko, kuya, okay to, konti lang ah. <laughs> Pero kasi naman, it's, of course, aside from the minimum public health standards, there are also other, uh, just a few more details that they would like to in, to to put in their checklist. But uh, to in, in, in general, what we want uh, to bring out in the safety seal implementation and in the rolling out of this program is that we, we have to show the public now that come, you know, where the, these places can open and they are being compliant. Because we're not just going to put a safety seal, especially for us who are in the inspection, for, for display. It means a responsibility on our part and it ensures that we are making the, the employers responsible. We are at a stage where vaccination is here. We are, you know, um, we are already uh, protecting ourselves. We are kumbaga in the journey where we are seeing more light in our uh, battle against COVID. But we have to also put people back to work and people have to go, you know, um, and ensure that the economy will start going up. People have been suffering. Sabi nga ng mga surveys, you know, when they poll, um, people are now, more people now are going hungry. There is so much uh, burdens on, uh, on unemployment, partial employment, and a sa the safety seal will help go, us go back. Um, it will help, like me, I, do, I have my fears, but if I'm going to see a safety seal and I am also vaccinated, I will go. I will, um, sabi nga namin eh, uh, and, and when we talk about, you know, the, the government, we have to jumpstart the economy. This really needs a big boost, a shot in the arm. Not The vaccination is already the needed shot. We also need to give the shot to the economy. So we are, let us all continue to stay safe. And unless we are all safe, we will not stop keeping everyone safe. Thank you very much, Asset. So to recap, um, we have discussed the requirements for us to get the safety seal. Um, Doc Tess already discussed the issuing agencies that we can apply for. And most importantly, the benefits that we can get if we will be issued a safety seal, not only on the consumer side, not only on the employee side, but also to help the actual employee, the, the actual um, the, the actual employer. So, muli, maraming salamat po, Asik of Cueco. And thank you. Then, thank you to all. Kung may tanong, please feel free to uh, email uh, BWC or even text me. <laughs> thank you very much, Asik. So, kindly stay until the closing remarks for our participants. So at this point, I would like to thank the PCOM QCC Virtual Kapihan Team. Pinangunahan po ng aming technical head, our very own PCOM QC chapter, Secretary Dr. Jose Angelo Taylor. To formally end tonight's educational activity, ladies and gentlemen, our chapter secretary, Dr. Jose Angelo Taylor. Hello, am I loud and clear? Okay. Yes, yes Dr. Taylor. Th thank you so much, Dr. Jason. As of the moment, the our country is go going towards to the light of hope as of the moment we have already the, we have already vaccine roll out we have already especially right now that we have already the safety seal we have already learned that the safety seal will be uh, a plus for all of our companies if we do have with those it's uh Again, uh, I would like to uh, to 
say our gratitude in behalf of Picom Quezon City Chapter to Asset Coqueco for gracing us for this uh, uh, another Kapihang, uh, 29th Kapihang OH. So I hope and for the our next Kapihang OH, we would like to invite you again. Uh, for, we would like to invite you again. Uh, I would like to recognize the national officers and board members of the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine, the chapter uh, chapter officers of PICOM, uh, of, of PICOM and of course, uh, the PICOM Quezon City officers and board members. But of, uh, this event will not be uh, fruitful if we don't if we don't have our guest as of the moment we have reached around 500 plus attendees for this kapihang oh so again thank you for all of our attendees without you this won't be our this won't be a success we would like to inform you that the 28th Kapihang OH, Living the New Normal with COVID-19, will be premiering tonight, 10 p.m. This will, uh, <clears throat> and of course, kindly subscribe, like and share to our channel, and please hit that notifi notification bell for further updates. Become Quezon City Chapter will have a special activity named as, uh, that will be known as Kaalamang OH. This activity will actually empower not only occupational health physicians, but also occupational health nurses, OSH practitioners, HR, uh, HR professionals, and those who are who would like to learn more on certain skills with regards to occupational safety and health. So the first module will be about creating online health declaration form. The instructor, uh, instructor will, be, um, uh, will be yours truly. It will be this coming July 3, uh, 2021. And the module will be from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The registration, uh, the registration link, you may take a screenshot of this registration link and you may screen, you may also take a screenshot for, uh, take a shot for this QR code. The registration fee is only 750 pesos only. And for more inquiries, please email becomecassoncitychapter at gmail.com. Once again, this is Kaalabang OH, <clears throat> an activity of become Quezon City Chapter. Of course, we would like to invite everyone to please like, follow, share our social media channels at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our email if you would like to contact us or to have a collaboration with our chapter at become Quezon City Chapter at gmail.com. Again, in become Quezon City Chapter, we value your safety and health. Hashtag become QCC Cares. Thank you. Good night and mabuhay. Dr. Jason, thank you thank so you, much. Dr. Taylor. Uh, Dr. Taylor, if I can request, if you can show again the slide of the Kaalamang OH so that the participants will be okay. able to know the link. All right. Uh, I had some problems with the, okay. Okay, current slide. Okay, hold on, please.
technical difficulty, sorry. So I'll just have to reshare it again. Okay. So again, I would like to invite everyone for become Quezon City Chapters Kaalamang OH. The module will be uh, will be about creating online health declaration form. Uh, yours truly will be your uh, instructor. It will be this coming July twenty first, uh, July third to twenty twenty one, eight a.m. to five p.m. So take a screenshot, uh, and also you may click on the registration link. Registration fee is only seven fifty pesos, seven hundred fifty pesos. Thank you, Doctor Jason. You may uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Doctor Taylor. Muli, uh, si Kukweko, salamat po sa inyong pag-share ng inyong expertise. I would like to invite everyone again to like our official Facebook page, follow our Twitter and Instagram accounts. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button of our official YouTube channel at the addresses shown on your screens. Muli, maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo. Sa susunod na 30th Kapihang OH, ako po si Dr. Jason Cabigon na parating nagpapaalala na sa Quezon City Chapter, ang inyong kaligtasan at kalusugan ay mahalaga. Hashtag PCOM QCC Cares. Good night everyone, stay safe and healthy.